You just got home from work, or school, and you see this free game called Fortnite. The first time you played it, you felt a feeling you've never felt before. That feeling was a craving. You craved more and more Fortnite until that craving was satisfied. So what made you feel that way? So it's September 26th, 2017, and a game called Fortnite Battle Royale was released to the public, and people from all over the world started playing it. After the first month of its release, over 45 million people played it, and at the time, People didn't know that it was going to change the gaming world forever. So why was this game so popular back then? But for some, it feels watered down after all this time. So I downloaded Fortnite the first day it came out. It felt different from the battle royales we had at the time. Games like Club, Call of Duty, and Modern Warfare. But this one was different. This one got me hooked because of the building aspect of the game. Most people know how to build now. But back then, I never saw people building. Maybe a hut but nothing like the build battles we have now. So when I started my first match, I thought it would feel like PlubyG from Call of Duty, but no, it had its own feel, its own space. The cartoony vibe that was going around and the map felt massive compared to other battle royales. So I loved it so much that I got addicted. So in my first game, I landed on the two houses near Tomato Town and that would always be my favorite landing spot. But at that time, I thought the circle was the storm and I did not know how to build or get wood, brick or metal. The game was completely silent. You could hear an ant crawling. So let's talk about season one. So season one was the start of something great. That's when Fortnite added the item shop and the seasonal shop and the first holiday event. So the item shop was simpler compared to what we have today. In the year 2024, we have cars, back blings, music tracks, and even shoes. But in 2017, we had a skin and a pickaxe. And the seasonal pass was an item shop, but you had to level up to unlock the skin so you could buy it like the Renegade Raider. And during that time, a lot of content creators were playing the game on YouTube and other platforms, and people started to understand that Fortnite cared a lot about their game and the people who played it. So it's December 14th, 2017, and there was an update that changed Fortnite forever. So when I loaded up Fortnite, I saw a whole new game. There was a new lobby, new tabs, battle pass, and I clicked on the item shop, and I saw all the new Christmas skins that I never bought. But then, I clicked on the battle pass, and I saw three skins and many other rewards for only 950 V-Bucks. But for some reason, I never got it, and went and clicked ready. And right away, I saw lights and the bushes and trees decorations everywhere, a snowball launcher. And this is when more and more people started playing and more streamers. And this made the Fortnite we know and love today. During this time, people weren't as competitive. Most people didn't know how to build a wall because most people wanted to have fun with friends or watch their favorite streamers like me when I was streaming Fortnite to about two people. When season three came out, I got the battle pass right away. So I would not forget, I was so mad, I forgot to buy it. In the first few days, I got tier 100 because I bought a few tiers. Just a few, maybe like 50 or 35. You serious? But anyway, they added back planes in the battle pass. So it's June 30th, 2018. The release of season four brought the first ever live event. It was a rocket launch, but it's the first time you see a game do something like that. It may have been basic by today's standards, but back then it was magical. And it also brought the first collab. It was with Wonder and brought Thanos into the game. Fast forward to the time where people started to want a new map, and Fortnite gave them what they wanted, but not until they brought Chaos to the map with Season X, aka the last season of Chapter 1. This season brought my favorite vehicle in Fortnite, it was called Mechs. You could jump in the air and turn people into dust. And it also brought back fan favorites with a twist like Taco Time, or the no building effect when you enter the Wild West. So after all that, everything went dark. Fortnite ended after two years being on that map. One event took it all away, and then, we waited, and waited, and waited, until... So chapter two caused panic because the game got less update because of a virus. During this time, people were at home and had nothing to do. So Fortnite, chapter two, season two, was great new interest in the map bringing Midas and Brutus, Choppas, and even A Agent Peely. And since most people was at home, they had nothing to do, unless he was young and had school. But most people was playing Fortnite while doing their schoolwork. But when the storm passed, a new storm arrived, a downfall of people not playing Fortnite, since most went back to living. When Chapter 3 launched, it was exciting at first. A new map, a new start. It sounded great on paper, but almost immediately, something fell off. The map looked beautiful, sure, but it lacked the personality of Chapter 1. POIS felt more generic, like they were designed to look good rather than feel good to play in. Where Chapter 1 had memorable locations like Retail Row or Pleasant Park, Chapter 3's map felt like a bunch of landmarks slapped together. Another thing, the loot pool got too complicated. By chapter three, Fortnite had introduced so many new weapons and items that it started to feel overwhelming. Instead of sticking to the basics, Epic kept adding and vaulting things, which made it hard to keep up. Remember when it was just about picking up a pump, a scar, and some minis? 
Now you had to worry about which SMG was the meta, which AR was better, and whether you should even bother carrying certain items. The introduction of Zero Build was a double-edged sword. On one hand, it brought a lot of new players who didn't want to deal with sweaty edits. On the other hand, it took away one of the core mechanics that made Fortnite unique. For Og player, this mode was a game changer. No more getting boxed, like a fish, or hiding in a bush. You can go back to your roots and play normally. Fast forward to chapter five, and things haven't improved. For some players, it feels like Fortnite has lost even more of its identity. The map, it's changed so many times that it's hard to keep track of what's where. And instead of creating a sense of mystery or identity, it just feels confusing. You don't have those iconic spots where you know exactly what to expect. Every POI feels like it's trying too hard to be cool without actually being memorable. But I like the chapter five map, yes. I said it, I liked it. So this is why OG Fortnite was addictive. Chapter one wasn't perfect, but it was raw. It felt fresh, like Epic Games didn't even know they were making history. The map wasn't overly complicated places like Tilted Towers, Dusty Depot, and Greasy Grove were simple but full of personality. The building mechanic was new, and nobody knew how to use it properly. Matches weren't about sweating or showing off edits. They were about exploring, surviving, and having fun. The seasonal updates were something else, too. Remember the first battle pass? It wasn't packed with a million cosmetics, but it felt special. Skins like Black Knight and Sparkle Specialist weren't just outfits. They were badges of honor. And the live events, those were moments that felt like the whole world stopped. The rocket launch, Kevin the Cube, the butterfly rift, Every event made you feel like you were part of something bigger. But most importantly, Chapter 1 was simple. The loot pool wasn't overloaded with a million items. You had your pumps, scars, and RPGs. There weren't 15 different mechanics to remember. You landed, you looted, and you fought. It was easy to understand, but hard to master. And that's what made it uh, fun and addictive. The gameplay has also become way too sweaty. Back in Chapter 1, you could drop in with your friends, mess around, and still have a good time. Now, for most players, every match feels like a tournament. The skill gap has grown so much that casual players are either forced into zero build or pushed out of the game entirely. So, the answer is, it was the magic, the soul of the game. Chapter 1 wasn't just about the gameplay, it was about the feeling. It was about dropping into a match and not knowing what would happen. It was about the little moments, like hiding in a bush with your squad or pulling off a clutch victory. It was about the community, where every streamer and YouTuber was hyping up the game, creating memes and sharing experiences. But Epic Games has proven time and time again that they can innovate and surprise us. And with the release of Fortnite Og returning permanently, we should expect a lot of people to return.